Welcome to the Word of Wisdom Connection, where wisdom meets the pulse of today's world with Pastor Bridget and her esteemed guests. It's time to be enlightened, challenged, encouraged, and inspired. So prepare for an experience that will connect you with the wisdom for living the overcoming life. And now, sit at the table with the woman who always wins. Wow. Well, it's our first one. You can tell it's live. So it's time to like and share again, like and share, like and share. We don't know what happened. However, we're back and we're getting our guests back on there. Um, Got to send them a different link, all of that good stuff. So while we're getting them on, can you please like and share, like and share? Let me know you're back. Thank you, Cheryl, for coming back. Uh, Cheryl Walker, Walker is back. Tim is back. Uh, Tim Savoy is back. Miss Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Charlotta is back. Oh my goodness! I we really don't know what happened. It just I guess the I ain't gonna blame it on the devil. I just don't know something in cyber world. Like we'll we'll blame it on the cyber world. So thank you all for joining back on. I'm gonna make sure those numbers get up quickly uh, and come back on. So y'all tell me y'all are back. And you know, I, some people may be just getting on, but we're back. We're back. Thank you, Nicole, for coming back. Lindsay, thank you for coming back. Gwen, come. Thank you for coming back because we gonna win. We always gonna win. Hello, Miss Dorothy. Thanks for coming back on. Thank you, Ash. Ashley for jumping back on. Beverly, thank you for jumping back on. We got to get our numbers back up. So everybody share and like. Thank you, Andrea. That my sister. She's on. Thank you for being back. Hey, Carol. Thanks for coming on. Sheila Oliver, thank you for being on. Hey, daughter, Prashia, we're back. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. Let's go. What's happening here? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, uh, it's my first one. And you know, for the first one, you know the devil gonna try to try to do something to discourage me, but I'm not gonna really blame it on the devil. Like I said, I'm gonna blame it on cyber world, you know. I don't know, streaming world or whatever, because we were in the midst of talking, introducing ourselves, and then all of a sudden, I Pastor Danielle comes on with all of her beautiful flowers looking good, all of that good stuff, and then all of a sudden it just went away. But guess what? The team is yeah. back. We know how to bounce back from a setback. Oh, that would be a good topic to talk about. How yes. to bounce back from a setback. We are yeah. bouncing back. Our numbers are coming back up. So let's kind of share once again. Hey, it don't hurt for us to share what's happening in our world once again while we get our numbers back up. So Lady J, you were first before. So let's talk about it. What's happening? Okay, let's do it. We will not be defeated. Okay. Not be defeated. <laughs> Uh, Lady J, Lady Jocelyn Williams from Orlando, Florida. I am a mother of three. I have a senior. Uh, my son is a senior and my daughters are in middle school, sixth and eighth grade. And as I said before, I'm going to say it again, keep keep me in prayer. OK, two girls. And then um, I am a wife to an amazing man, my husband, Apostle Andre Williams. And together we pastor Truth Nation Church in Orlando and in Port St. Lucie. And I'm excited to be here on tonight with my spiritual mother and excited about this new endeavor and just being able to be a part of it and the topic tonight. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and you didn't, last time you didn't say anything about it, but you have a, a whole women's ministry um, that you are coaching women and all yes. of that. So talk about that a little bit as well. Absolutely. I am an asset coach. And so basically I show women, teach women how to discover their inner potential um, by learning their personality traits, their strengths and their weaknesses. And it just exposes uh, the idea of them starting businesses, uh, just having a different perspective about their lives uh, outside of what they do in, in, in a normal uh, setting. So I host a master class. It's a 12 hour class. It's a game changing class. It's virtual and um, an intimate setting, but uh, it really takes your life and your perspective of life to a whole nother level. So, and I'm sure in our setting today, I'll be able to talk a little bit about that because it's birthed out of my personal experience. And so now I help other women with building their self-esteem and their self-confidence as well. 
Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it where our numbers are coming back up. So everybody that's back on, hey, tell them, hey, say, tell them we're back. Tell them we bounce back from our little setback. So <laughs> go on and share it, like, share, tell everybody. All right, Pastor Aisha, what's happening in your world? Uh, like I said, we experienced a 4.8 earthquake today, <laughs> but not enough to stop us. <laughs> so, <laughs> we passed a uh, uh, a church in uh, Westville, New Jersey, Deptford Township, I always say five minutes across the uh, the Ben Franklin Bridge and uh, the Walt Whitman Bridge from Philadelphia. So if you're in the area, come check us out. I'm also a certified Christian counselor and I pastor alongside my husband, Bishop John Edmondson. He's usually on many times with a, a apostle as well. And we've been pastoring going on 25 years now, our, wow. our ministry. So awesome. God has been good. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, Lady Danielle, Pastor Danielle. I am uh, Danielle Murphy, and uh, I pastor the Dream Center Church of Atlanta with my husband, William Murphy. We have uh, two children that are still here at home, and uh, one has just recently graduated from college a year ago, David, and we have a daughter who is uh, in her junior year. Um, we've been pastoring for 18 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, in August, we'll be married 25 years. Um, we, I have a book entitled, I'm Unstoppable, um, My Defining Moments, and um, which actually is a combo coaching a workbook and book um, that kind of came out of a mentorship class that I did. And I wanted to compile it in a place where someone can work through it um, on their own. And um, working on my second book right now called Covering Your Covering. And um, hopefully that will be released in August, my 25th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, finishing up on my Master's of Divinity degree, graduation is May 11th. So that's where my focus has been um, now in finishing the course for that. So excited about being on with you, mom, in this wild connection. Amen. Well, of course, as I said earlier, all roads lead to She Rose Lead Conference, April 24th through the 27th. And so we're going to show a spot of She Rose Lead Conference. Actually, Destin, can you flip it? Can you show Love City, which is our legacy project of me and Apostle, show that first and then show um, She Rose Lead Conference. And then we're going to come back and we're going to dive into the subject subject as yeah. people are getting back on because our numbers are getting back up. We were almost up to like three or 400 uh, at eyes on us a few minutes ago. So we want them numbers to get back up. So if you'll show that Love City spot and then show She Rose League and then we'll come back. It costs less than a pair of sneakers, less than a concert ticket, less than designer items. And for some, it was a sacrifice. And the question was asked, was it worth it? Now, when you see what a Christian summer camp experience does for a teen, you know that it was worth it. Now, many of uh, the teens leave having an encounter with God that's going to last them a lifetime. Then some leave having decided uh, not to be rebellious anymore. And still others say that now they know how to say no to drugs and vaping. And then you know it was worth it. Listen, I'm Apostle Hudson, and by the grace of God, my partners and my team and I have developed an awesome summer Christian camp for teens in the shadows of downtown Houston called Love City USA. And it's transforming the lives of teens in amazing ways. Listen, it's a place of fun. It's a place of fellowship. It's a place of faith with first class air conditioned dormitories, uh, cafeteria, uh, state of the art worship facilities and much, much more. Now, our theme this year is chosen. We want every team to understand that they have a God-given purpose and they are chosen by God to make a positive difference in life. Now, it's time to reserve the spot for your team group 
for the June and July summer camp sessions at Love City here in Houston. Now listen, we have slashed the price for the four day, that's right, four day summer camp from $299 to $199 per camper, making it possible for more teens to attend. And that covers everything. It covers their lodging, it covers their food, it covers all of the fun. Listen, we don't wanna leave any teen behind. Now teen groups come from across America to this summer camp to experience this amazing teen sensitive spiritual encounter. And we'd love to host your team group. Now, for more information, text LCUSA24 uh, to 54244 or go to lovecityusa.com. Treat your team, the teams that you care about, to an experience that will last them a lifetime. Go Love City. When I look at the amazing accomplishment of bold women, it makes me proud to be a bold woman of faith. I trust you are making plans to be in Houston at New Light Church for She Rose Lee Conference 2024 with the theme, She's Bold. I'm putting my full wholehearted support for the 2024 She Rose Lee Conference, April 24th through the 27th, hosted by my daughter, Dr. Arisha. For years, I hosted the Successful Women Who Win Conference and have, by the grace of God, graced major women's conference platforms in America. It's most refreshing to see Dr. Arisha take up this mantle and her theme, She's Bow, is most inspiring. Many people see me as a bold woman of faith for the groundbreaking accomplishments and for winning against the odds in so many situations, but that boldness to step out and obey God was birthed in me years ago at a women's conference in Oklahoma. I made the investment, I traveled to the conference, pressed my way, and the rest is history. I believe that there is a boldness impartation that will be stirred in you by the speakers and the panelists at the She Rose League Conference, April 24th through the 27th. I'm committed to tell everyone I know the place to be for women is She Rose League Conference in Houston, Texas. To every lady that supported me in the past, I'm counting on you to rally behind me and my daughter to help make this year's conference an outstanding success. Register today, www.sheroseleague.com. That's www.sheroseleague.com. And meet me at She Rose League Conference 2023. It's time to wake up your kingdom boldness. Yes. How yes. about that? That flyer and all of those guests mm -hmm. are absolutely incredible. And then it just makes you want to come just to be a part of that. And then <laughs> Sunday, she announced the brunch guests who's mm -hmm. going to be there. And the brunch guest, for those of you who haven't heard, is Tisha Campbell. Yes. Oh, my God. And so when it first came on the screen, Apostle's like, who's that? And so I said, Martin, you remember Martin, don't you, Apostle? Yeah. So when he, when he realized, oh, that's Gina from Martin, he said, I never watched it, but I know about it. It's like, yes, that's who that is. So it's going to be fire. It's going to yes. be amazing. So I really, really want to encourage everybody who's watching, men and women, to be a part of it. SheRoseLeague.com. And guess what? Tonight, I said I was going to wait to the end, but I'm going to share it now. We have have a special discount for those of you who have not registered. If you'll do WOW10, that's the discount code WOW10, you'll get 10% off your registration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to make sure you register tonight. If you missed the early bird registration, now you can get a discount. So you can go WOW10 is the discount code for you to register. And I want to see you at the mm -hmm. conference. Wake up the kingdom boldness on the inside of you. It's going to be great. Amen. You guys have been to conferences in the past. So what do you guys think about this boldness? Mm -hmm. She's bold. Dr. Eyes bold on that flyer. It just, just makes you want to like come see this girl. What's she doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the flyer definitely got me. This will be I was there for the first one, and this will, of course will be the third one, and I'll be there as well. And I'm bringing mm -hmm. some of our ladies, and I've gone in the past and came back absolutely changed, transformed. It's the creativity, it's the atmosphere, it's the word, it's it's mm -hmm. all of it, all of the things. And every time I come back, the ladies are like, "So you just went and you just." You wasn't gonna say and nothing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> registered, but this time we made it more structured so the ladies could be a part. And um, they're excited. I'm excited, and 
I just love everything that Dr. Irisha hosts. I, I'm there for it because I, she's the master planner. And so yes. I'm excited about what God is going to do through each, uh, through each and every one of us um, spiritually and just the different aspects. I know that's going to be amazing. So I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Amen. It's going to be awesome. Well, are you guys ready to dive into this <laughs> subject on tonight? How yes. to feel better about mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, we were talking earlier and um, one of the um, one of the ladies asked me, why did I pick this topic? And I picked it because I just feel like one of the major strongholds that the enemy tries to put on women in particular is feeling good about themselves. Yeah. So my first question to you guys is, have you ever felt bad about yourself? Have you ever felt like you weren't worthy enough? Or have you ever felt not felt good about yourself? Has it ever happened? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, over and over, uh, we go through seasons in life that something uh, usually happens that triggers us to feeling bad about ourselves for whatever reason. And you know, women, we are our own worst critics. So sometimes it, it may be our weight, yeah. <laughs> you know, hello. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it could be something that happened in our relationship or with our kids that we've taken the burden on of, and we've blamed ourselves for that. So I think that every person, if, they would be honest. We felt bad about ourselves at one point or another in our lives. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say like en encountering different uh, titles, you know, becoming a wife and then sometimes feeling like you're not a good enough wife mm. or you're not a good enough mother or if the children cut up. It's like you start looking at yourself like, well, what did I do? Did I right. do something wrong? Um, I think just for um, I think all of us can maybe uh, uh, attest to this. Uh, the fact of just being in ministry. Sometimes you feel mm -hmm. like you're not, you don't level up to mm -hmm. your spouse. And so you kind of feel like, like they're the, they're the star. They're the ones that preaches and we're just kind of behind pushing them, but you never feel like you, like, do I really have what it takes? Or, you know, right. you know I, I, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be a preacher. I just so happened to marry one. You know, <laughs> right. I, I, do I feel like I'm equipped enough to be in this position that I've been uh, given? So yeah, just it goes through. You go through different phases of your life uh, having that thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, well for myself, I struggled big time, especially in high school and a little some in college. And I think as Danielle had said, I think we all go through it at different times we struggle with it. And I think that's where the word goes that we have to cast down vain imagination that exalts mm -hmm. itself against the knowledge of God because it can be very easy mm -hmm. to be susceptible to the thoughts and the different things that we experience, especially I think with teenagers now because of social media, or even us with social media, you see different people posting things, you know, about what that we feel that, or people think we should, uh, uh, keep up with and mm -hmm. make you feel some mm -hmm. kind of way about yourself if you're not um, keeping up with some of the things that you see. And so you've got to make sure, you know, we're thinking about, well, who does Christ say we are, you know, right. how right. should we really, you know, live? But it doesn't mean that it doesn't come, but it's about how we deal with it and how we attack it. But it's definitely a stronghold that tries to come on women and our, you know, our young women at different times. Right. And I, I really believe, and you guys will probably chime in with it. I think it's the root cause for poor self-esteem mm -hmm. and uh, it starts making you have this own, like this, like wondering how your self-worth, your self-value. And a lot of times we think about, like Danielle said, it could come as a result of you looking at yourself saying, oh, it's my weight. But then it could be other things like, you know, I've gone through a divorce or, mm -hmm. you know, or I've, uh, I'm a single, I'm single at 40, you know, and we're basing it based on what statistics are saying or mm -hmm. what other people are saying. And so mm -hmm. you have to get to the place where you understand that what is the purpose, what's God's purpose for my life. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of times that uh, many times that, uh, and I've heard apostles say it before, but it's, uh, poor self-esteem, poor self-worth, poor um, 
uh, feeling bad about yourself. And a lot of times it comes through experimentation. It comes because you experimented with sin and you don't like the consequences as a result of the sin. And so it starts making you feel bad about yourself or through exploitation. You've been victimized by people that you trusted. Like even in your innocence, somebody victimized you, which can cause you to kind of feel bad about yourself or through your evaluations, like choosing unfairly to compare yourself with others. Like I was saying about when people, they're not married at 40, you know, and they're single, you know, and so you start, you know, questioning yourself. Am I really marriage worthy or am mm -hmm. I this or am I that, you know, that kind of thing. And then of course, through expectations, you got unmixed expectations, which cause you to be embarrassed, those kind of things. And so um, let's kind of talk about, um, you know, some things that you think can kind of pull your, pull your self-esteem down. Like I've said divorce, I know I said singles, your weight, you know, that kind of thing. So um, what's some other things? Somebody said feeling inferior on, online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I know for me, what um, image is a huge thing, especially for young girls. Mm -hmm. um, growing up. Uh, so for me, I was born with a lazy eye. And during my high school, all of my high school, I had a horrible case of acne. And so the having a lazy eye and acne coupled together really put a damper on my self-esteem, how I viewed myself, what I thought I was good enough for, um, environments that I, I was supposed to be in, but I didn't want to be in them because I'm constantly always hiding myself. And um, it wasn't until I made the decision that I'm going to start highlighting the things that I do like about myself, that things change for me. And so I'm big on that where it's finding the details. You know, Psalms 139 verse 14 in the Message Bible, it says that you shaped me from inside then out. Yes. You know, every bone in my body, you know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. And that mm -hmm. verse stood out to me because it's like, sometimes you just look on the outside, but God created us with such details on the inside that we be sleeping on the stuff that he creates. Yes. yes. Make us different and what makes us stand out. And as I look among so many billions, a trillion people of people in the world, we all have a different thumbprint. We all have a different voice print. We Absolutely. all have a different thumbprint. And so if God can invest all that detail to ensure that I'm unique and stand out from everybody else, although we all look mm -hmm. similar, he put that same thing on the inside of me. So I had to discover things about myself that I like and start highlighting that. And it may, it sounds sometimes superficial. Uh, well, I feel like it does sometimes when, when I say it, but it bear witness with so many uh, other people because it's like, for instance, I didn't like my eye, but I do like my lips. And I realized that every <laughs> lipstick color I put on looks good on me. I yes. have red, yes. pink, purple, any color you put on, your girls yes. gonna come with it, okay? Yes. So now I took the attention off of what I didn't like and put it mm -hmm. on what I do. And so I, that's how I lead now. Lead with mm -hmm. my flaws, not my flaws. And that changed the game for me because people now are attracted to the positivity and not the negativity Negative. that I feel about myself. It doesn't mean that I change. I still don't like the shape of my eyes, but nobody would ever know that because I'm leading with the thing that I do like. So sometimes it takes some discovery, but when mm. you do find it, oh, you become unstoppable because now you're tapping into that, that unique side and that creative side of how God created you to be and not looking at it. The thing that I have that you don't have is what makes me different and what makes me unique. And that's a good thing because I don't mm -hmm. want everybody walking around with my same face. Right, you know, right. Absolutely not. Right, because even, even people who are identical twins, there's right. something different about them, you know, right. something that their fingerprint is different, mm -hmm. their handprint is different. So yeah. there's definitely a uniqueness about mm -hmm. you. And so, mm -hmm. you know, tapping into those uniqueness helps you to, to get past that low self-esteem. And then, of course, when you think about as believers, we are born again. We're part of the family of God. God chose us to be a part of his family. Yes. And there's nobody like us. We, we're supposed to win in every situation. We're supposed to be victorious in every situation. And so, hey, hey, if nobody else likes me, I know somebody God likes me and I like myself. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And just, just knowing that we were created in the image of God, that Genesis yeah. 1 and 27 says, so God created man in his own image, male and female created he, him. And when you think about that, that God had a hand in our creation, how could you not 
love or appreciate or care for that which God created. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing that um, our, our worth is 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 in God. Our worth is in the fact that God created us, and whatever God doesn't make any junk. Right. <laughs> so knowing right. that God has not made any junk, we should have a self value, self esteem, and self worth. Just knowing that God um, played the part of yes. taking the time to create us. Yeah, the Bible absolutely. says that He knows every hair on our head. So. He knows every detail about us to say to say that God knows every hair on our head. Yeah. To remember them that he's taken time. It wasn't a haphazard creation that God put thought into who yeah. we are. That's why we all have different DNA. We're all our own individual person. And there's something special about each and every one of us on earth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think too because, like I said before, I think social media and, and and trying to live up to what we see, whether it's on television or on social media, we we look at that and we're trying to sometimes keep up with that. But like as Danielle said, you know, we've got to look at how did God create us, and if He created us unique, we are all called to be who God has called us to be based upon how he uniquely made us. Wow. And I never, for, never forget about 20 years ago, I heard Bishop Barbara Amos. I don't know if anybody knows who she was. I heard her talk about, you know, because sometimes we're always trying to change something about ourselves, especially mm -hmm. when you see all these women, whether they're trying to take the fat here and put it somewhere else or whatever, <laughs> they trying to right. be like somebody else. But I heard her say one day, you know, stop trying to change who God made you to be. Mm -hmm. if, you know, some people want, you know, thin hair, you know, thicker hair. If God put the hair on your head, then it's good hair, you know? So it's, and I think we have to, like Danielle said, learn to be content with who God has called us to be and not trying to be like somebody else and be the authentic person that God created us to be. Absolutely. And, you know, God is so concerned about us that even when we mess up, he says, I've got a plan for you. Yes. If yes. you'll just confess with your mouth, the Lord, I mean, confess your, your sins before me, I'm faithful and just to forgive you. And then he says, I cleaned you from all unrighteousness. And then he says, I put it behind me where it'll never, I don't even think about it anymore. Right. It's put in a place of, of forgetfulness, forgetfulness, yeah. and he just forgot about it. And then I just love the fact that even when we're hurt, that God is concerned about our hurt. You know, Danielle talked about he's concerned about every hair on our head, but then he says our tears, he bottles them up in a jar. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, even when the moments that we're going through and we're hurt, he loves us so much and he's right there to, to be there for us. He's going to be the compassion we need. He's going to be the peace we need. And um, years ago, you know, I, 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 wrote my confession book. And when, one of the chapters in the confession book is building self-esteem. And so there are like 15 fruit, freedom truths. I taught them to my girls. I teach them to people all the time that you should say about yourself on a regular basis. You know, I'm a new creature predestined for greatness. Mm -hmm. I'm a child of God, fully loved by the father. I am forgiven. I will not be tormented by my past errors and mistakes. And then it goes on and on with all of the different things. I'm a giver and God is causing people to help me prosper, you know, just things like that. And so when the enemy tries to come and bring anything other than what the word mm -hmm. of God says, you combat it with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the Bible the said it talks about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so though I love those confessions and um, I love even when your girls, um, you know, start rattling them off, you yeah. know, that, that was instilled in them. And I think even as mothers, we have, you know, a responsibility um, to our, our children's self-esteem starts with us. Exactly. And, 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 and what we teach them and how we teach them to feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it is important that when we um, see them going in a direction that their self-hate or destructive behaviors or things that they're doing to doubt themselves, it's important that we change that narrative um, for them and start telling them who they are and having mm -hmm. them to confess it 
Um, yeah. Because sometimes we can say it and they don't believe it, but it's something about when you hear yourself, you know, say when you it. talk about those confessions, mom, yes. it's something about when you open up your mouth and you say those things out of your mouth, that mm -hmm. it really takes hold in your heart and in your spirit and in your mind. And then you find yourself living um, those things that you've confessed by faith. Right. Mm -hmm really become a part of, of, of your life and your actions and your daily regimen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, um, one of the things you mentioned it, but the thing is, is that you believe what you say over what anybody else says. And mm -hmm. so if you're constantly saying out of your mouth, what the word of God says about you, then that's who you become. And yeah. so I saw several people, um, making comments about casting down imaginations mm -hmm. and, um, bringing every thought into captivity. And so that, you know, that means that you got to take that thought and bring it into captivity to the word of God. And if Jesus had to do it with the devil, then yeah. how much more should we have to do it when the enemy tries to come and bring something totally different in our minds and in our thoughts? So um, I know earlier we talked about you guys asking me a couple of questions. So I'm going to let y'all shoot a couple of questions at me and then <laughs> I'll share. And of course, it doesn't have to necessarily be about this, but I think it would be good if we kind of stayed on this topic since so many people are are watching and looking and and really wanted this topic because I did like a poll like do you guys think this is a good topic and everybody was like absolutely yes so yeah 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 so, I would say go, go ahead. ahead go ahead lady oh, I was just gonna ask mom um well just being ma married to dad um and he's high profile man and you have your anointing and your gift things as well. And have you ever had any experience where you felt like you weren't, you didn't, I guess, live up to who he is or, you know, been able to discover who you are or felt like it was overshadowed or anything of that sort? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've, I initially, I used to always feel really, really bad about even trying to talk to him because uh, you know, he, he talks for a living. That's who he is. And so I had to find my space to where I could be able to communicate with him. And so without feeling intimidated, you know, um, dad says that he doesn't, his, his persona is just one that people just seem to be intimidated by him. And so, you know, I had to get to the point where I learned how to be able to talk to him and communicate with him and not not take everything personally. And that's what a lot of times in relationships people do is like, it's it's a person, it's me, I'm the one that's not good enough. I'm not good enough for this. I'm, and I just started saying, wait a minute, you know, I'm, I'm the same child of God that he is. So mm -hmm. God's got to give me wisdom on how to communicate with him. And so he did. And and uh, basically, I, I, I don't, I don't let dad intimidate me at all. <laughs> you watch it right now, too. <laughs> Hi, dad. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and then of course, you know, there, there are people who will try to push you to be something that you're not. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, just dad is a, a straight line up online teacher. Okay, of course, he's going to teach you straight line up on. Well, I'm more like a preacher, preacher. I'm going to have, I'm going to come with the fire. I'm going to come with all of that. I'm a, still going to be word of faith, but it's going to be fire. So I don't think God intended for me to be him. He wanted me to be uniquely me. That's and right. So I'm, I'm, I'm me and I'm going to always be me. So that's right. And yeah. we love you. And now that's a question I was going to ask you. Yeah. Mom, and I don't know if you can expound on that because that was one of the things that liberated me so much about you and seeing you is that when I came into pastoring along with my husband and seeing how you pastor along with your husband, it made me feel liberated that I could be uniquely me. I didn't have to be like other pastors' wives. And that liberated me so much. How is it that you, I mean, how were you able to get to the place of being who you are? Like, cause you're not, you know, pressured to have to pr preach or do certain things of how you may see other pastors' wives. You are very authentically you. And, um, and you, you don't allow anybody to make you feel otherwise. At least that's my perception. So uh, you, how, 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 how can you say, can you let us know 
how are you able to do that and still feel good about yourself? Because I think other people need to know that, how they can be authentically themselves and still feel good about themselves. Yeah, and it all comes from knowing who I am in Christ. You know, I, I know who I am. I have confidence in that. And then, of course, I think for me, my biggest asset is my prayer life. I'm going to, even if I get upset, if I, if something bothers me, the first place I'm going to go is I'm going to go to God. God, come mm -hmm. on now, between me and you, we got to work this out. Give me wisdom on how to handle this. And what I knew was that I wasn't going to be in the mold of wearing the hat. And, you know, I tried that. I tried to be the first lady with the hat because that was the example <laughs> that I saw. And so I was going to try to be that first lady. And then, of course, uh, apostles told it all the time how, how I didn't play. I don't play. I don't sing. Don't play but, I, but I am I am committed to being who I am. And mm -hmm. so I just got to the point where I said, uh, it's, you know, God, this is, this is who I am. And uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to ever get outside of the word of God, but I'm going to be uniquely who I am. And so um, I think it just comes with you knowing who you are and having the balance. Yeah. 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 And Tapping. being able to, being able to even, you know, also even able to make adjustments, making adjustments when, when necessary, because I think women are created to be flexible and adaptable. And Thank so you. when I'm flexible and adaptable, that means that I'm going to say, okay, God, what, what's the best way to handle this? You know? And so I'm going to handle it in a way that pleases God first. And then the second thing is making sure my husband is covered and protected and I'm not doing anything to embarrass him either. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, that can sometimes uh, cause us not to feel good about ourselves because we're in the process of trying to please other people or what other people think versus w trying to make sure that we're pleasing God. Right. You know, if we right. focus on pleasing God, then, you know, then eventually we'll, we'll, be, we'll feel better about ourselves. Absolutely. Life. Absolutely. Because, you know, one of the one of the things that causes uh, or that you can see um, people that have low self-esteem is one of the things is they start making unnecessary adjustments to make right. other people like them. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they'll start, you know, doing things just so other people can like them. They'll laugh at jokes that are about people that are like them and they really don't, you know, they know that they not, that's not who they are. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times they, you know, they'll, um, they think other people are talking about them when people are not really even thinking about them. You know? <laughs> so, so, so a lot of times I think that those are the flawed things that we allow to mess up, mess with our self-esteem and our self-value and who we really are. So yeah. and sometimes we just have to get out of our own heads, you know, because mm -hmm. we we can be in our own head and we're thinking that we should do a certain thing that we're not just like you. I laugh when you talk about the hats because that's one of the things that I say. Like, <laughs> I, I don't like hats. I don't want to wear no hat. I'm not going to wear a hat. It's very liberating to be able to just be who you are. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't think until I started coming to Women Who Win years ago when we had the, remember we had the pastor's wives session mm -hmm. and I started really realizing the pressure that some of our first lady yes. sisters were under. Yeah. Like, I guess I, I just took that for granted because I kind of went into this thing looking at people like you mom that were already liberated and said hey be yourself and I started out just being myself. Right. You know, but then I started hearing the cries of a lot of our sisters that are pastors' wives and they you know had this pressure on them to be something that they were not authentically. Right. And, um, I remember you giving so many of them that advice to just be you. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't like wearing hats, don't wear hats. Right. <laughs> exactly. Be authentically yourself. And yeah. it's so much easier just to be who you are than trying to be something that you're not. Yeah, you're a great model of that, Mom. And I, I like to say uh, you're a great model of being an original. Because when you try to be someone else, you limit yourself to being a carbon copy. Mm -hmm. When God only creates originals, mm -hmm. so carbon copies are just a reminder that there's a an original. And I don't want to walk around here being a reminder of somebody else. Right. When I only have original potential, and that's right. something that you 
have shown us to own our own unique and be confident and comfortable with that. And, you know, it also reminds me of um, the story of Esther. The king is in a search for a new queen and he's gathering all of these women and they're coming and they all are going through the 12 months of the beauty treatments with the oil and the preparation for their one night with the king. And one of the verses that I absolutely love is uh, Esther 2 and verse 15. And it says that Esther went in and she required nothing, which means she could have put she could have went with anything with her night with the king to make it memorable but she owned her unique. And that's yeah. the thing that made her stand out among mm -hmm. all the other women that went through the same process that she did. And I think that is such a highlight for us as women to say, what we have is enough. Right. Yeah. You know, what I carry, what I hold on the inside is enough. And that's what made the impact with the King. And that's why he extended favor to her. And so I take that for myself and encourage that for other women as well. What you have is enough. What you I have is enough. enough. That's Are you right. need and tap into that. Learn who you are, discover who you are so that you can own who you are. So, you know, the scripture, I use this personally. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge is available, but you have to pause to figure out what makes me unique. Right. And then fall in love with it exactly. and then own it. Exactly. It's a whole process there. Yeah. I got to actually fall in love and not be so concerned with comparing myself to, oh, but she doesn't do it like that. And she doesn't do it like that. But how do you do it? Right. Do it like you. Right. Own that and stop right. trying to be somebody else. And right. that original aspect and having that mentality is changes the game in everything when it comes to marriage, businesses, with your children. Like mm -hmm. you're not looking at everyone else because that comparison factor will is it, it's the killer of anything great. Right, exactly, and then, and it, and it should it should not be um, I say confused with the the scripture that says follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Right. He's not telling you to be a carbon copy of them. Right. He says yeah, right. follow the principles that they use in faith and patience to inherit the yes. promises, and so you can do that by say, hey, this is the example. This is the, this is how I'm going to follow it. This is the faith process that they use. I'm going to use that same faith process. Yes. And it's going to work. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. So any, any tips on how you can overcome self-destruction or self, uh, self-deprivation? What can we do to overcome this self-depriving self-esteem um, thing so we can be the best that God wants us to be? How do we, what, give me some steps. What can we do? I'll say, first of all, you got to watch what goes in your ear gates and what goes mm -hmm. in your eye gates. And you got to meditate on those things that God tells us to meditate. He says in Philippians 4, he says, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, those are the things that we ought to meditate on. Right. Not, not watching. Some things we don't need to be watching. Some things mm -hmm. we don't need to be listening to. Because right. whatever you watch, whatever you listen to, that is what we're going to end up wanting to be like. And that is what will end up perverting us in the process. Because whatever you think, that's what you're going to believe. And whatever yeah. you believe, that's what you're going to speak. And we know that life and death comes from the power of the tongue. And we eat the fruit of whatever it is that we speak. But that all comes from a result of what we end up meditating on. And mm. by what goes in our eyes and in through our ears. Right. I, love, I love that, Aisha, because I was going to speak about the importance of renewing our minds. Absolutely. If you are a person that, you know, uh, over and over, you know, sometimes it comes from our environments and our past. We may have grown up with in households that our parents or people around us were not real affirming. And some of us have to reprogram our minds. You know, the Bible tells us to not um, be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may be able to test and prove what the will of God is. Um, so because it is his good pleasure and his perfect will for us to have renewed minds in him. So for some of us that didn't have the benefit of growing up with parents that constantly affirmed us or gave us confessions like mom Bridget um, mm -hmm. did. And we have we have the responsibility to renew our own minds and change that narrative. And that comes through confessions, through the word of God, through prayer, 
you know, so that we can see ourselves like God sees us. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say Absolutely. something to that? I want to just say something because like you just said that Danielle, I was not, I was raised by my grandparents, mm -hmm. not my parents. And I had this one time where I had my father cuss me out, call me everything but a child of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful that I was finally at a place with God where I was, a, where I had meditated on the word. I knew, I knew mm -hmm. who I was in Christ. So I did not allow what he said to me or what he was saying about me to dictate who I was. Right. In fact, I was able to get to a place of saying, almost, I felt at that point, like father, forgive him for he knows not what he's doing or what mm -hmm. he's saying. Mm -hmm. But that only comes from spending that time with God, knowing who you are in God and right. meditating on that word and not allowing what other people say about you to dictate who you are in God. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that means changing your circle too, your community right. of people, because, yes. um, you know, um, there people can, there are people in your life that can be toxic. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're around people that are constantly saying negative stuff to you yeah. and about you, or even about themselves, um, that can have a great influence on you. And so right. I think community is important. What type of people you are in the company with? How yeah. do they feel about themselves? Because people that don't feel good about themselves are not going to be affirming to you either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you have to have a strong community that um, is really affirming and has a, has a, a, a renewed mind even about themselves. Yeah. Right. Right. That's you know, I was Go ahead, Johnson. No, I was just going to piggyback off of what Pastor Danielle said as far as having the right circle of people. And that's one of the things I've always appreciated about um, my husband is that when we got, got connected with AIM under um, mom and dad, that it wasn't just about who he was able to, you know, gain wisdom and understanding and faith from. But also I wanted to be able to glean from the first lady, the pastor, the wife. And that's something that I do with you, mom. And so that has been a game changer for me, having some type of mentor, spiritual leader that can pour into you. That is a living, breathing role model and example of where you want to be, where you see yourself going. Because when you do have those thoughts and like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. You're, you're that constant reminder reminder like if she can do it I can do it, if, I can you do it. Do, if you're pushing it then I need to push too how did you right. operate during that situation I saw mom do it okay this is how we're gonna do it and mm -hmm. so having that really uh changes yeah. it for me so being connected to those that you can really look up to uh mm -hmm. in, in, in every moment and every aspect of your life right right and so I think just to uh capsulize it all I, I'm gonna just give you some pointers on I think if you're gonna fix your low self-esteem or if you're gonna fix your self-esteem you got to trust locking on the potential for your purpose mm -hmm. Ephesians 2 10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus born anew that we may do the good work so you got to trust that process or trust locking on to the potential of your purpose there's a purpose for my life I'm here for a reason God has me here you know out of all of the millions of sperms that came through your mother's womb God made choice of you and you made it to the earth. And so I'm here on purpose for a purpose. And then you got to trust leaving the past hurts behind mm -hmm. you in the past. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, Philippians talks about forgetting those things that are behind <laughs> us and reaching toward those things are before. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's not saying that you've never been hurt, you've never been abused, but it's a process of you trusting that if I leave the past behind me, I can go forward. But if I'm constantly looking behind me, I can never go forward. And so one of my favorite scriptures is Hebrews chapter nine, verse 14 says that if by the blood of goats and animals and cleansing of the unclean uh, heifers, that we can cleanse our conscience unto dead works. In other words, the blood of Jesus can cleanse all the hurt, all the pain, all of that can be eradicated through the blood. And so mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why I say you're daily affirming who you are from the word of God mm -hmm. and confessing what you are and declaring the blood of Jesus cleanse my heart and my mind. It will get you past all the hurt that you've been through in the past. Mm -hmm. And then trust living to participate in projects that God has an assignment. There's something that I need to do. Get involved in my local church, get involved with other women's group, get involved with doing stuff with others so that I can be around people who are working toward better and working toward being better. And then uh, trust the loving, um, 
trust loving and being pleasant to people and that's the thing mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're hurt you hurt other people yes. you know the saying says hurt people hurt others yeah. well just be nice if you just yeah. be nice then niceness is going to come back to you so you know you got to trust that and then trust the law of positive meaningful professions which is making sure you're making your confessions of faith and so i'm pulling out my book i keep it on my desk and even though i wrote it i pull it out every day and here's here's those 15 freedom truths i'm a new creature predestined for greatness i'm a child of god fully accepted by the father I'm loved by God regardless of how I perform. I'm forgiven, will not be tormented by my past errors and mistakes. I'm an overcomer. My faith is changing my circumstances. I'm a giver and God is causing people to help me prosper. I have authority over the devil. No demon power can hurt me. Abundance is God's will for me and I will not settle for less. I'm healed and sickness and disease will not lord over my mm -hmm. body. God is on my side. I will not fear. The Holy Spirit is my helper. I'm never alone. I have the peace of God. I'm blessed. It's a matter of time before things change. What I see now is only temporary. I have yes. the wisdom of God. I hear the Father's voice. My steps are ordered by God and the yes. voice of the stranger. I will not follow. I am set in the body of Christ. I know that I am valuable and important to the work of God and I choose not to be offended. I'm being deliver delivered out of all afflictions and purpose persecutions i promise you that you will not have you, feel feel good. Good. you have to feel good about yourself you, you, to. You, to. I, I, I love that life. You got me excited as you were sitting there saying them yeah. i know yeah. and i i love that i choose not to be offended Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Not, and it's a choice. It's a I choice. You can choose to be offended or you can yes. choose not to be offended. That's the yes. choice. Yes. So yes, I I just think that this has been amazing. I just want to hear some comments from the people uh, in the audience that uh, some people are saying, I'm about to order this book right now. You need to order it right <laughs> now. Put that yeah. back up there on the screen yeah. for them, yeah. so they can see how to order it. I think you can go to uh, himmerch.com org that's him merch.org or if you want to text you can text vkihbh to 54244 my thoughts on victorious confessions it's only 15 dollars it's a 15 dollar investment that will change your not one, not one for your girlfriend too absolutely. yeah absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yes buy one mm -hmm. for your girlfriend and yep. you know um i have so enjoyed tonight it's just been yeah. so good i was getting ready to uh kind of share with you guys some of the topics we're gonna talk about um of course this is gonna be every month but for the month of april we're gonna do one more in april april 19th i think it is the next one is gonna be on april 19th at eight o'clock and uh, of course it's gonna i'm i'm gonna i've already asked my daughter dr i to come on with me on april 19th so she's gonna be one of our guests on that night so i'm super super excited about her being yeah. on uh for april 19th but here's some other topics topics that I think will be great. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Hold on a second. Let me show you, share with y'all some of the stuff that's going to come up. <laughs> How to have confidence in prayers for your children. Yes. Um, what y'all yes. think about Already that? Oh, yes. 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 oh, we need it now. We need yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> we need it now. Is that April 19th? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can make that little mom. <laughs> um, then how to combat the feeling of loneliness. Oh yeah, that, that's great. That's great. Oh, every yeah. single in the house need to be well. Even yes. other people that need to even understand that. Yeah. Then the other one is um, how to how to be positive in a negative world. Yeah. How to rekindle the joy of living on purpose. And then I've got several others that we're going to talk about. You know, um, I see my sister and my brother out there. My sister in love and my brother are watching. Thank you, sister and brother, for watching. Uh, he probably sleep by now, but she, <laughs> yeah, my brother goes to bed so, so early. So early. go to bed before he, the he's just resting his eyes right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he goes to bed so early. So, yeah, but yeah, so the those are some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, let's see, what time is it? Oh, we, we went way over time, even with our little little time that we had a break. So we came oh, back. I can't remember what time we came back on. But can, yeah, can Lady J. 
I was gonna say if anybody has any suggestions, can they put it in the comments? Yes, that would be great. Okay. Any suggestions oh, of yeah. topics you want us to cover or you'd like for me to cover? It's all about wisdom, about words of wisdom. And I'm you know, I I've got 49 years of being Ooh. a pastor's wife. Oh Ooh. my gosh, yeah, 49 years, and so kind of got a little bit of wisdom yeah, on some just, things, just, just a little bit. Let me just say again that we are just happy to have you in this virtual space. Like, yes, I'm so, we are so I'm, happy that you're here. I'm Since so excited to be yeah. here. I think um, just the just the response on tonight shows me that you guys have been waiting on me to yes. come out here. Yes, so, yeah. yes. Well, we've had a chance to experience and right. hear some of your wisdom over a period of time. So I think this is such a great opportunity for the world to be able to hear yeah. your nuggets of wisdom that you have because you are phenomenal. I mean, the words of nuggets of wisdom that you have to offer to people, this is, it's, it's, it's time. It's time. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. So Jessica, hi, Jessica. Jessica said, glad to see you back. Yeah, I'm back. You know, I had to, I had to find my space, you know, cause my family is just, is always on here. So you know, <laughs> I, gotta, I had to figure you out. I have room, room for you. There's still here. room for you. There's still room for me. There's, There's still room. room. For me. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> um, somebody said they love the authentic, authentic, Authenticity, authenticity. authenticity yes. of the platform on this platform. Uh, this was good. I appreciate you all. This is uh, that's where she gets her wisdom from the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. And uh, <laughs> somebody says, Happy you're here, Pastor B. I do love her. Very wise and anointed woman of God. Thank y'all. Y'all are just so encouraging. Yeah. Just so, so much encouragement. I tell you. And then, of course, a great platform. Thank you all again for being on. I'm so grateful that y'all took part of y'all's Friday to be on. And for all of y'all, y'all are on a different time zone. Y'all are a whole hour ahead. So mm -hmm. thank you all for taking the time out on a Friday night to hang out with me on a Friday oh, night. So it's been our, our pleasure. pleasure. Our pleasure. Our, our pleasure. pleasure. Yep. Thank you. So any any closing comments before we go? Well, you know what I'm going to do? Let me show uh, Dr. I spot on uh, She Rose League one more time and then talk about the discount code. The discount code for those of you who haven't registered is WW10 for tonight is 24 hours. It'll give you 10% off for 24 hours. Let's look at Dr. I's uh, spot and then we're going to come back and I'm going to uh, talk and uh, have some closing comments. Age is more than a number. It's a story of triumph, learning, and boldness. This is Dr. Irisha inviting women of all ages to She Rose League Conference April 24th through the 27th. From young visionaries to esteemed pioneers, this conference is a melting pot of experiences and wisdom. Together, we'll share, grow, and empower each other no matter the stage of life you're in. Seize this opportunity to be a part of a diverse and vibrant community. Register now and join us in the this celebration of timeless boldness. Register at SheRoseLeague.com and I'll see you at SheRose League 2024. Awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Praise God. Somebody was watching us from Tanzania. Wow. Praise God. Thank you for watching from Tanzania. Those of you who haven't registered, you can register WOW10 and then you can get a 10% discount. And then of course, she has already opened up the virtual space for those of you who can't make it. You can still register SheRoseLeague.com for the virtual space and get in the virtual audience and be a part of it. Um, of course, um, one of our members, Miss Grace said, hello, Pastor D. She's looking forward to to meeting you and Bishop in person real soon. So she's, I guess she's coming to ATL real soon. So thank come you so much. Yeah, come see the Murphys. My <laughs> baby is there. My baby is at the Dream Center Church under watch care. She, I'm, I'm still saying watch care because she coming back to Houston soon. She on here watching tonight and she know her mama. Her mama is believing that she coming back to Houston. Well, she'll be at the conference, of course, on Wednesday night. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, going to be amazing. So any last thoughts before we go? Any last comments from each one of y'all before we go? Sure. I would say be you. Everyone else is taken. Whoa. Yeah. I love wow. it. Oh, 
that yeah, I love it. was good. Wow. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I don't know if we can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would say, don't forget your disciplines that are going to uh, keep you feeling good about yourself, which is your prayer and meditation, your biblical affirmations, having a good community support, making sure you exercise self-care and taking care of you and continuing to renew your mind from those past traumas and pains. So it can be done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I will say when you walk in purpose, when you walk in who God has called you to be, then you will definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, feel good about yourself because you'll be doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Shia said, help, Lord. This is a great show, Mom. It's time to log on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because I was saying, we want you to come home. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, I got a bunch of people out there in agreement with me, Press. So, <laughs> hey, I don't know. I don't know. Can't fight City Hall over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But no, this has been great. I have really enjoyed it. Of course, um, mm -hmm. so glad to be out on the virtual platform. And as I said, um, I'll be back on April 19th with Dr. I. And of course, I want to encourage you, those of you who watch tonight, make sure you still can share it. It's going to stay out there for a while so you can watch it and later come back and watch it again. So we love you all and thank you all. Thank you, Pastor Aisha. Thank you, Pastor Danielle. Thank you, Lady Jocelyn, for again, taking part of your Friday to come out and hang with us and share some words of wisdom. Thank those of you who watched tonight. Everybody's just been given just great uh, compliments about how great the show was and how they enjoyed it. So I want to just say once again, thanks to my apostle, my husband, my pat, my <laughs> apostle, my bishop, all of that, my best friend for pushing me because he's been pushing mm -hmm. me for about a year now to jump out into the virtual space. And I've been like, eh. so I want to <laughs> just say thanks to him for constantly pushing me. And then I want to just say thanks to Dr. I for allowing me to get on her uh, platforms and her uh, on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of that as well. My daughter is doing such an amazing job. As yes, she is. Yes, she, she is. This is her sixth year. And of course, uh, she has just stepped out and she is just doing amazing. So, so godly proud of her. And so those of you who are in the Houston area, if you don't have a church, the only church to be a part of is the light. And we encourage you to come and be a part of the light. 9 a.m. at the north, 12 noon at the south. And then, of course, be a part of She Rose Leaf Conference, April 24th through the 27th. And until next time, I am looking forward to seeing you next time here uh, on the virtual platform, April 19th. And thank you for being a part of Word of Wisdom, Words of Wisdom Connection. I love you all with the love of the Lord. And thank you so much for being a part. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.